Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do beer stuff here. Sometimes we do mystery beers. Sometimes we do beer reviews, podcasts, all that fun stuff. Sometimes we do more than one beer at a time. That's what we'll be doing today. From a brewery that I think their barrel aging program is very, very underrated. Central Waters. Yeah. We're going to do some barrel aged stouts today. This is their base Brewers Reserve Stout. Yeah, this is the 2021 version. Uh, story time on this one is, let's see here. It says, the brewery, uh, brewery's most highly sought after beer. This imperial stat is aged perfection in oak bourbon barrels. Look for this tasty treat to contain hints of bourbon and vanilla with roasted overtones that is sure to please any connoisseur's palate. Um, serve this beer at cellar temp from a snifter glass, a little colder than that, and enjoy this experience of our passion for brewing. Yeah, label-wise, classic, pretty much what Central Water's been doing. The color has changed, a little of the styling has changed, but their Brewer's Reserve has pretty much kind of, I think they used to have like a band up here, but it's pretty much been like this way for quite some time. I don't hate it. Burn barely aged out. I said multiple beers, though. Did they say vanilla? More vanilla. I'm going to be doing the vanilla version of this beer to see how they stack up. This is actually the rye vanilla barrel. So we got rye and um, uh, vanilla. And this has to be at minimum 2021, if not 2022, because date on this, there's no notch. And this one actually has a notch. You can, uh, you can see the notch has been cut out in 2021 there. This one does not have a cutout notch, but it only goes back to 2021. So it you know, could be 2021, could be 2022. One more. Raspberry Sun. Um, yeah, we have a little bit of stout Asian bourbon barrels with raspberry and natural flavors. This be, again, no idea. But we do know because it goes back to 2022. That's it. So it has to be the 2022 version. So you basically have a raspberry uh, barrel age. This is a raspberry Kringle, by the way. Um, Kringle Stout. So it's a Kringle Stout aged with um, raspberry. In the barrels. Maybe the Kring Kringle already has raspberries. Anyway, these all come courtesy of my boy Cameron. Yeah, my boy Cameron uh, from Atlas Wisconsin's way. He sent off these, and I kind of said, eh, maybe I'll do a side by side by side. And they're like, yeah, that's crazy. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. So you got 12% on this one. Do we get an ABV on this one? It's Central Waters. There's no way they didn't put an ABV on this thing. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't. Let's see with this one. This one doesn't have one, actually. Only this one really does. Maybe it's hidden somewhere in a label and I just, I'm not picking it out. Not that it matters much. They're probably all around the same ABV. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the base vanilla rye over here. And then we'll corresponding glasses. So we got a little um, Darth Vader with the red, little raspberry. Now, to be fair, the Imperial one has red too, but there's white on this one. More white, so it dictates vanilla. The base gets a plainy. Um, so yeah, let's dive into these suckers, see what's going on. My camera's recording, that's good. I always like to confirm that. Let's do the base. We'll pour the base, and then we'll pour the other two. Can't do a three-way pour. I don't have a third arm. So let's stick that. I'm going to push them all off to the side when we're done. And they sit on the rye vanilla similar on that Kringle and then we'll uh, do one of these jammers the double pour I used to be really really good at these because I used to do them quite a bit but now not so much let's see I suck at these now spilled something usually I get an old mystery beer wrapper right laying around but I don't so clean it with your hands old school oh it smells like raspberries um Let's not line these suckers up over there. My hands are going to get sticky and disgusting, though. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I should always have water. I don't know why I don't bring waters with me. Oh. Pilsner. I meant for my hands, though. <laughs> anyway. So. Let's do that. We'll put the base in the middle, because that's how we're going to roll make some sense for y'all. I'll sit sign title for this one. That way you can see my beautiful face, but also see this stuff. So, start with the middle here. 
see what the base has to offer. Rich bourbon, man. Rich bourbon, but not. it doesn't smell like it's going to come off overly hot. You you get that there's bourbon involved. You get that the barrel involved. The biggest thing I guess I'd say I'm surprised at, I don't get this huge, like, rich, roasty kind of stout. It's, it's there. You get a maltiness, but there's not that roasty, toasty kind of burgeoning in the coffee thing you typically like with a larger imperial stout. Yeah, it smells quite nice. Bourbon leaning, but not too hot. Let's dive into the rye vanilla. I mean, there is definitely a whiskey difference in here. I'm not going to sit here and say I know enough to be like, yeah, there, we're definitely dealing with a rye barrel here. But it does have this nice kind of spiciness to it with just a, a micron. And I say a micron more vanilla than what I would get over here. Nothing too huge, but you can tell. You can tell. That's the best way I could put it. Let's dive into raspberry over here. See, the raspberry's here, but it comes off, like when I rub my hands, and I was like, okay, I can smell raspberry. That initial raspberry pop I got off kind of wiping that little spot I spilled. It's very candied. Um... I'm getting like real fresh raspberry out of this kind of almost like to put the stems and the seeds and the whole thing in there and mash it up. So you're getting a little bit of tannic kind of vegetal kind of things along with that raspberry it comes off very organic. And there's something to it, like almost like a, I would say a nuttiness. Maybe that is part of the raspberry thing, but there's like a, almost like a nut portion of the show here. Um, like, it, it, you know, thinking Kringle, thinking Christmas, thinking those things like automatically brain leans to like gingerbread or something. Like, it's not that, but it's akin to that. So there's this big, just nutty characteristic along with the raspberry, along with the beer. Very much the same kind of beer across the board as far as, you know, not a big roasty component across all of them. You tell there's a big maltiness to it, but it does ring bourbon, does ring rye vanilla, and it does ring that raspberry along with those barrels. Cheers, y'all. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like super textbook. Bourbon barrel aged out. Old school bourbon barrel aged out. I'm, I'm not going to be wowed here. I'm not going to be like, oh my god, this is blowing my doors off. But you get it nice. Malt Ford Stout. It's almost like a porter to me, more than a stout, because it lacks that roastiness. But it has this kind of nice mouthfeel, nothing close to thick, but drinkable for its ABV that we assume it's closer to 12%. The other ones are. You get a nice bourbon from it. Nothing overly hot. Nothing overly roasty. Nice pop of vanilla. Done and done. Quintessential old school barrel aid stout. I mean that in a positive way. New school, pastry stout, beer hunter guy that just wants just impact 24-7 and everything has to be an explosion that's insane. Might not be like, okay, this is great. Turn his nose up to it. As far as burn barrel ace stouts go, very, very nice. Ravenella. It is creepily verbatim this with a touch a touch of rye and a touch of vanilla again not a vanilla monster not a rye monster but you can tell that whiskey barrel difference almost tastes like they actually took this and then put it in a rye barrel with oh, that's how close it is with a touch of vanilla very very close but a distinct difference that's what i mean like while it's very similar it's not like you can't discern the difference between the two there's a marked difference between the wolf I dang it. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. It's a very fun side-by-side. -side. It's how close they are, but how obviously they are different. This would have been an awesome blind mystery beer series, by the way. Um, and it's funny because that's what Cameron does. He does the, him and his dad doing the battle beers. So let's dive into this uh, raspberry. Cheers, y'all.
that's tasty for a fruity raspberry beer. I am losing a bit of spirit here from these two. Um, I do get that there is a bourbon uh, spirit barrel involved. I don't even know if it's bourbon. I don't even want to look now because I just want to guess at it. But it seems a little bit less, or decently less. He's still, there's still a barrel influence involved, but it really is that raspberry that's the star of the show, as it should be, because that's what the beer says. But it's not like it's like leaps and bounds huger than the flavors over here. It's just that it just seems like the barrel and the beer itself just dialed back a little bit. Yeah, I dig that. I like them all. I think the rye might be. It's a combination of these two. They're very fun beers. And like I said, it, it, it's it's very kind of like you know you're drinking the same beer. That might sound a little bit boring to people. That might sound a little bit kind of pedestrian. But I think it's really fun when the brewer's like, hey, here's our barrel aged stout. Here's our barrel aged stout in the rye and vanilla. Here's our barrel aged stout with raspberry and some other thing. Because like I still get this kind of mar not marzipan, you know, it's marzipan y, but very light marzipaniness kind of thing, so marzipan is based off nuts. So it's, it's got this nutty marzipan -y thing going on, which I think is fantastic. It's one of my favorite flavor combinations, raspberry, nutty marzipan -y. That's, like, fantastic when it comes to beer. It's just, it lacks a little bit of volume. Like, if you were to take the... I want the base beer to be a little bit more just... not ABV, but just volume on it. A little roastier, a little toastier. And crank everything else appropriately up. Now, we're not talking going from 8 to 11 here. But just give a little notch on a barrel character. Give a little notch on the spirit. Give a little notch on that raspberry across the board. I want a little more volume. And that's from a guy who appreciates non-insane volumetric beers. But they're very, very tasty. Very, very fun. Fun. That's the word. That's the word I would say. Fun. Tasty, fun, delicious. Thank you very much, Cameron, for sending these off. Like I said, Central Waters, for me personally, they have been a very underrated brewery when it comes to their barrel aging program. And while these aren't, like, world beaters for me, as far as, like, all-timers, they're definitely tasty beers. We just have one more thing to do. You gots to. You gots to the whole thing. I'm going to do both of them. The Super Kuvi. We'll see if this one... I actually creepily think this one might be, like, some weirdo, awesome amalgamation of fantasticalness. Cheers. Yeah, it smells nice. Nah. They're all better by themselves. They all has, have a unique personality. Um by themselves when we mix them all together and just lose that you know yeah i figured maybe there'd be kind of some some kind of voltron-y kind of barrel thing that was like no we're more barrel but it really is you lose the raspberry you lose the rye vanilla and you know there's a spirit involved but it's a little bit muddled so i'll keep these separate if you ever want to do that but very fun nonetheless so thank you very much Cameron, for sending these off and let's talk about it let's talk about central waters as a brewery um, you know, uh, for me, they are a barrel-aged brewery. You know, I know they do way more than just barrel-aged beers and big beers. But for me, and what we see in distribution out here in New Jersey and up in New York, I don't think they get into Pennsylvania. I could be wrong. Um, it's all barrel-aged stuff. But I know they, they do quite a bit more than that, obviously. And um, what is your experiences with them? Have you had a bunch of their beers? Have you had a bunch of non-barrel-aged stuff? Have you had these particular beers? Have you had some of the other beers from them? I mean, they're... Um, <sighs> Brewers are barley wine aged. And one of the Peruvians, I don't know if it was Sunrise or Sunset, like, blew my doors off. Um, what have been your favorite beers from them? Have, like I said, have you had them in your state? They distroed. What are they distro your state? Have you been to the brewery? Have you had their non barrel aged stuff? All those things down there. <sighs> Let's talk about it. Yeah. There you go. The review's over. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Hopefully, you're enjoying some Central Waters right now. We'll see you next time. Cheers, y'all.